Now I know that there's a lot of you out there training at home, doing your Uchikomi, doing your technique training, some in the living room, some in the dojo, uh, but I want to help you with 10 really important tips that are gonna help you with your technique and your technical training. Tip one, Kazushi. Kazushi, a lot of people think that you have to pull upwards to pull them onto their toes, but it's more of an arc out here, and also this hand needs to be able to turn, needs to be able to rotate. But that is if I am uh, throwing in a forward direction. If I'm throwing in that forward direction, wrist watch here, watch how the hand turns, and I'm looking at the wrist watch in, in order to get that arc. But it's not always um, the same direction, of course. If it's a uh, Koji Oji or Osoto, it's pulling the Kazushi hand in towards the midsection. Osoto towards the midsection. If it's Ashiwaza, one step to the side, that hand gets pulled to the midsection, towards the core, here, towards the core. So it's not always the same uh, direction with the Kazushi hand. Tip two, the Suruji hand needs to be able to rotate. So rather than wrap the thumb up, let's keep a loose thumb here. And of course it follows the Kazushi hand, but this is my direction hand. So if we're going forwards here, the thumb can go in the direction that I want it to go. And if it's going towards the back here, again, the thumb can go and point in the direction that I want it to go. If it's Ochi over here, split your legs, it's again, thumb pointing in the right direction. So this hand needs to be flexible, but it also needs to keep up with the Kazushi hand. Tip three is about finding the right shape for the technique. Uh, and it normally is because of the hands working together in order to get that nice shape. So if it's Kayatoshi, for example, I need the hands, the Suruchi hand and the Kazushi hand to be working at the same time. And you can see that the whole shape to the technique is nice. If the hands don't work, then what happens is, if we leave the Suruchi hand behind, for example, it can pull us out of shape and it doesn't look right. So we need to correct this to make it the correct shape. Tip four, the head. Now the old teaching used to be that we always rotated the head no matter what the technique. And, and over rotating the head can sometimes pull the body out of shape. So head determines direction. So for example, where I look is normally where my opponent will land. If I'm throwing in this direction here, where I look is where they go. Ashiwaza, one, two. Look at the leg that I'm going to sweep. Where I look is where they land. Tip five, foot placement. Now foot placement is so important because quite often what will happen is people will either not rotate all the way in with both feet uh, so if we're doing the Chikomi for the Sienagi, for example, we need both feet really central and in order to get the lift. If we are doing Taitoshi, for example, then our foot placement needs to be in such a place that we can offload our opponent over. If it's Oso to Gary, we need foot placement in such a way that we're able to get a sweeping action. So the feet being in the right place is very important. Tip number six, am I getting full rotation? So if I'm using the elastics, for example, 
Am I getting full 180 degrees rotation round? And what happens is quite often we cut corners. So we need to be able to rotate all the way in every time 180 degrees. So don't cut short on the foot rotation. Tip seven, are we breaking balance and are we going past that sticking point? And what we mean by this is, for example, I see lots of Uchikomi, oh so the Gary, for example, where people are swinging the foot forwards, but actually not sweeping the leg and not actually going past that sticking point. Uh, if we come this way here, the sticking point is from here, just past that point of balance where they can't stop themselves going over. So it's the next thing from Uchikomi to Nagakomi. Exactly the same for the Osoto here, past that point of balance where it's uh, something that they can't stop. So uh, going past that sticking point, breaking balance. Are we breaking balance every time we attack? Tip eight. Now, are the hands and the feet all working together? Because without one uh, and the other, the technique won't work. So the Kazushi here and the Suruti hand, but also it's getting the feet moving at the same time that we break the balance. So if we're just thinking about breaking balance and then we think about the feet, it's not going to work. If it's just feet without breaking balance, it won't work. We need to get everything going from here all at the same time. So now, tip number nine. Is my Uki, my partner, reacting in the right way? Because they can make it or break it. So if, for example, I'm doing a technique and they stiffen up to it here, then they're gonna pull me off balance. It might be that they just don't go with the flow of the technique. So what I need to do is to talk to my Uki and get them to react in the way that I want them to react from here. So they get the feel of it, it's almost like dancing, and I need to really feel the movement every time I move in. If they pull me off balance, then I need to correct them, and I need to let them know, so that the next time that I do it, they are not pulling me off balance, but they are helping me at all times. So for tip number 10, I know that you're gonna have a real problem with this in your front room. But the main point is, the finish of the throw has to be carried through with complete control with the Kazushi hand, the Suruti hand, so that when we actually throw it here, we follow it right the way down with control with the hands and we don't let go at all. I hope that you enjoyed my 10 technical tips. Now I know how difficult it is if you're in a room and you haven't got a lot of room actually in to move, but you can remember certain little things that will help you if you're doing Uchikomi, if you've got uh, somebody that's cooperative there helping you to do Uchikomi in the living room, all right, you can make a difference if you get some of the technical bits right. And that means getting the Kazushi right, maybe just breaking balance, so rather than just coming in and out uh, for the sake of getting a workout, better to do it properly. And I think that, uh, well, we know that um, repetition doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent, right? So we might as well make it as perfect as we possibly can every single time. Get a workout and at the same time, get it technically right as well.